Let's take a look at this scene from the opening of The Father. So what happened? Nothing. Oh, tell me. I just did. Nothing happened. Nothing happened? No. Oh. I've just had her on the phone. So what does that prove? You can't go on behaving like this. It's my flat, isn't it? <laughs> this is incredible. It's a great opening and offers very good exposition. We talked about this, do you remember? Ah, is that why you're so keen on this nurse living with me? But it seems as if we already know what we're about to watch. If I heard from, for, for the very first time, oh, you know, there is a movie about dementia and Anthony Hopkins is very moving in it, I would, have, I would feel as if I, I had already seen it, you know? And, and because it looks like a story we already know, we know where we are, we know where we are going, it's supposed to be moving. And I think this is not what is the father. The father is something else. It's not only the story, it's, it's the experience, again, of what it could mean to, lo to lose everything, including your own bearings as a viewer. I'm telling you, she stole my watch. Yes. Your watch? Yes. Isn't it more likely you just lost it? And I think that the, the narrative, the way it is told, the structure, is more uh, original than what you could uh, expect when you just uh, you know, hear that it's about dementia. In other words, form is everything. Just a quick reminder before we go ahead, as often the meaning of form is mistaken or misunderstood. If you consider content as what is said, form is how you want to say it. Or according to David Bordwell and Christine Thompson, it is how the film is designed to create experiences for viewers. So form includes the script, the mise-en-scene, editing and every decision on how to deliver the content. There is no much difference between content and form. I mean, you can reach content through forms and you can reach forms through content. You need both, but you need a, a move from one to another. Only forms, then it becomes an advertising business or, or, or only content. Is not good. Uh, is not good either because you miss. Because you, yeah. I mean, you, the human body is a form, and this form has a content like an envelope and a letter. Without the envelope, you can never send the letter. Okay, that's good enough for now. Let's get back to our business. The father has a meticulously structured and layered script. There is a note on the design in the beginning of the script. The intended aim is to create uncertainty and the impression of being simultaneously in the same location and somewhere different, ultimately a hospital. So they made the goal very clear from the beginning. In this video, we try to break down the many ways the film uses to disorient its audience. We wanted to use the set to be part of the narrative. In a way, the set had to be taken as if it was a labyrinth and I wanted to use that to play with the feeling of disorientation of the audience. So we define some uh, steps in the evolution of that apartment from Anthony's apartment to this empty space that was supposed to be the hospital. Notice how the main two colors in the color palette of the film, blue and beige, are used. They gradually shift the space from Anthony's home to his daughter's home, and then finally to the nursing home. Let's take a closer look. The shot above is from the third scene in the film. The father has just seen a stranger who claims this is his apartment, and then a second stranger who claims to be his daughter. So he feels totally lost, and see how the bedroom looks very blue and cold around him. Whereas below shot is from a later scene halfway in the film. As we saw earlier in the script, the strategy is to take us from the father's apartment to the hospital step by step. But since in this scene, the father seems to be in control and waiting for his dinner, there is a touch of warm tone to the scene. The film really interrupts and confuses our sense of time in the story. The progression of scenes in the script does not follow a linear pattern, and the same discipline is followed in editing. The scene with the plastic bag is a great example of this approach. On the left, we have scene two, just after the opening scene, where Anthony refused his daughter's help and we saw her leaving his house. Now, Anthony is in his own kitchen. He seems to be in control until he spots the plastic bags. His confused expression shows he doesn't know where they came from. 
Now look at the right. This is later in scene 3. The same shot and composition are repeated. Now we see his daughter appearing with the same plastic bags and she puts them on the exact same position. Notice how the colors and details have changed in the kitchen, but yet it looks very familiar. So we're clearly not in the same place. Is this scene later in the story? If yes, then why does the real Anne comes back with the chicken again? How long has passed? There is a possibility to, to tell the story over two days. Basically, there is only one dinner with the chicken. And the day after that dinner with the chicken, there is this uh, uh, carer that is uh, coming to, to start her work with Anthony. But it's, it had to be also at the same time possible to tell the same story on three months time. And he had both possibilities has to, to work together because the idea was to, to, to break uh, the logic with time and space at the same time. You lost the keys? No. And sometimes you have only one sentence or sometimes only one word that force you to change your understanding of the time or the, the space. My father has left me Dr. Sally. This brings us to the third element of the film's disorienting form. It's not only a stylistic choice, but an effective companion to other elements of the film. Can I ask you a question? Can I uh, hmm? ask you a question? It makes the audience constantly question what's true and what's not true in the story. An amazing effect that somehow mimics dementia. Can you do that for me? Well then. Yeah. Well then, how much longer do you intend to hang around? How long do you intend to hang around? Here? Getting on everybody's tits. Great films often have scenes that are a small version of the whole film. The dinner scene with the chicken is one of those, where we get to see the same dinner twice in a row in a circular pattern, which in a way is how the whole film works. It's really built that way, so that you have repetitions in the frames, repetitions in the words, repetitions in the lines. He's ill. He's ill. Dad, what are you doing standing out there? Come, come on. You, you have to think also maybe this is the same chicken, this oh, is the same dinner. Dead. So I just came back before come the then. dinner. Anne, the moment will come when however good she is, he's ill, Anne. He's ill. Dad, what are you doing standing out there? Come, come and sit down. It's like a circle, but at the same time, it's what is repeated. It's not exactly the same, so that it's like, like very disturbing because it looks like hell. It's me. Ah, there she is. One of the most shocking effects often used in The Father is swapping actors for the same characters to depict the confusion of the main character not being able to even recognize the people around him. Of course, this decision is not unprecedented, and a famous example that comes to mind is Luis Bunuel's That Obscure Object of Desire, where two actresses play the same character to portray her dual nature. What is this nonsense? What are you talking about? But what makes it brilliant here is that it intensifies the experience of dementia and takes it to a horrifying level. Anne, uh, where is she? I'm here. Not only that, but often actors disappear in the middle of a scene. What? Don't let her get cold. Where's Anne? She went out. Really, already? And appear again when we least expect them. Well, where do you want to go? Park. It's a nice day. Everything all right? Fine, we're just going to get dressed. But... The film really does a great job of keeping the scenes as yeah, subjective morning. to the father as possible, like here in this scene. This is the morning after the father's nightmare, where we've just learned that his younger daughter had died in an accident, 
as it was hinted a couple of times before in the film. And of course the daughter is also played by the same actress who played father's favorite nurse. Dad. This is also the last time we see the father in his daughter's apartment. Is that her? That's yeah, so. But I'm not ready, I'm not ready. We learn that they're expecting Laura, whom we've seen several times before. But it seems it's going to be her first day of work with the father. Another disorienting scene in the timeline of the story. What would she think of Mary? I've got to be properly dressed. Oh, Dad, why do you have to make everything so difficult? You can get dressed later. Don't worry. Notice how the film manipulates us with switching actresses' voices. Laura, hello. Hello. I'm not too early, am I? No, no, not at all. Come in. Come in. We're just in the kitchen. Here we are. We were just about to get dressed. Bye. Did you notice anything? Okay, once more. It uses Laura's voice while she's out of the frame saying hello, and then switches to new nurse's voice when she appears in the frame. Hello, Anthony. The result is quite shocking and disturbing, as the film completely plays with our expectation. Later in the final scene, the film completes the puzzle as we find out who she is, most probably. I'm Catherine. Catherine, that's right. Uh, yes, yes. And yes. yes, I said probably because the film leaves it to us to decide for ourselves which part was true and which part wasn't. Um, what about me? What I think makes the film exceptional compared to a lot of other formalistic films is that it doesn't try to get too clever with the audience. And despite all the disorienting elements we discussed, it keeps us engaged emotionally. In my head, well, it's always been that way. Now, what would you like, young lady? The film is like a puzzle and you have to, to play with all the combination to try to make it work. And, and the moment comes when there are so many contradictions in the narrative that you have to accept that your brain is not capable to understand everything. And, and when you do so, you, you let it go. And when you let it go, in a way, you can understand the whole story on another level, which is a more emotional level. And even though the, the narrative is sometimes complex or chaotic, even though you're not quite sure in the end of who is who and what happened exactly in reality, in the end, everyone understands exactly what it was about, what, was the emo what were the emotions and what was the, the main character's journey. When a film is great, so many elements must have come together to make it work like a magical potion. We didn't have time to cover all those other elements, such as the impeccable acting, sound design, music or use of props in this film. Perhaps those need another video essay altogether. My name is Ali and this was an episode of Lessons from the Screen. Thanks for watching.